this is Tamara from OogliBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the Quicksilver Shawlette. You can find the free written pattern on MooglyBlog.com, and I do suggest that you print out the pattern for this one to follow along. If needed, look in the description of this video for the link. Now, let's go ahead and begin. We'll be using Superwash Merino by Lion Brand, and I'll be using a Furls K hook. That's a 6.5 millimeter. If I move these out of the way, you can see at least some of the Quicksilver Shawlette here, and here it is being worn. As you can see, it's made up right here in a lovely gray and white, but of course you can choose any two colors you like. Let's demonstrate how it gets started. To begin row one, we're going to start by making a slip knot, just as we normally would for most patterns, like so. And then we chain two, one and two. And we'll be working back into that first chain we made to start our pattern here. We're going to make two double crochets in that first chain we made, aka the last chain of our row of chains, which was a pretty short row, admittedly. So, a little fiddly here at the beginning. Get those first two double crochets made, like so. There we go. And that's it for row one. Easy peasy. Let's go to row two. I like to start this pattern, each row, with a chainless starting double crochet. If you don't like the chainless starting double crochet, you can substitute a chain three instead. But I'm going to go and demonstrate it with the chainless starting double crochet because I just think it gives a nicer finished edge. So to do that, I'm going to pull up my loop, put my finger on top of the loop, wind the loop around my hook, and go into that first stitch, yarn over, pull up my loop, yarn over, pull through two, that kind of second one was more behind than through, but yarn over and then pull through those last two loops. And that's my chainless starting double crochet. If you need to see that again, um, if you'd like to see that in more detail, there is a separate video tutorial for that on the Moogly Blog channel. So once I've got that made, then I chain one and simply double crochet in that second stitch, the last one there. And that's it for row two like so. Then it's time for row three. So of course we turn again and row three, again, like I said, I like to start every row with that chainless starting double crochet. So I'll make one of those right in that very first stitch, like so. And then I will double crochet in that same stitch right there. So right back in that same stitch again, like so. Then I am going to chain one, and then I will double crochet in the last stitch. Not in the chain space, but in that last stitch, and that can be a little fiddly. So you can turn your work over a little bit here, find the top of that chainless starting double crochet. Sometimes they like to hide, and if you're, especially if you're new to the stitch, it can be really helpful to stick a stitch marker right in the top of it every time you make one, just so you can find those top two loops to work into again, a little bit easier. So that is row three. And as you can tell right now, it really doesn't look like much. The first six rows we're going to make here are basically set up rows for the rest of the pattern. So don't get too upset if this looks a little wobbly and weird right now. Let's go ahead and move on to row four. We're gonna turn again and make our chainless starting double crochet in our first stitch. Like so. Then we work two more double crochets in the same stitch. So there's one and two. So we've got three double crochets essentially worked into that first stitch right there. If we include that chainless starting double crochet, which for a stitch count we would. Then we're going to chain one skip the next double crochet and work a double crochet in that last one right there. So yarn over, find that last double crochet, which is actually our chainless starting or the top of your chain three, if that's what you've started with, and make your last double crochet there. And that's row four. And this is where it really starts to come together, although you probably won't see it yet in terms of repeating stitch pattern. So let's start row five. We turn 
And to begin row five, we'll start with our chainless starting double crochet in that first stitch, like so. Then we will work a double crochet in the same stitch. Then we chain one, skip the next double crochet, work a double crochet in the next one. So that's the center of those three, that group of three right there, like so. Then we chain one and work a double crochet in the very last double crochet, that one right there. And that is the end of row five. And just to be sure, you can check your stitch count now. You should have six stitches, including the chains. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So those are our six stitches across. Let's do that again without my hand in the way. One, two, three, that's the chain, four, five, another chain, and six. So we should have six stitches at the end of row five. So we'll go ahead and begin row six. So let's begin row six. We'll start, of course, by turning to go the right direction and work our chainless starting double crochet right in that very first stitch, like so. From there, we chain one, like there, and then we're going to work three double crochets in the next double crochet. So this is one of those double crochets that's out there on its own. So we'll work three double crochets right in there, and I'm pointing that out to help so you can start seeing how the stitch pattern comes together as we go here. So we work three double crochets into this one. As I said, there we go. There's our three. Then we're going to chain one again and work a double crochet in the very last stitch, that one right there. Want to make sure to go into the stitch, not the chain one space, because then we'd be losing a little bit of our width and get a little wobbly. So that is the end of row six, and we should have seven stitches, including the chains. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven with that last one we just made. Now, like I said, these first six rows are just the setup rows. It looks a little bit wobbly, but you're starting to see the shape. You can see this side here on my left is nice and, or on my right, if you're watching the left-handed version, that this side here is nice and straight. And on the other side, we're starting to get our angle like so and we've started to establish our shape, and we've just barely started to establish our stitch pattern. In row seven, this is where we begin what will be the repeats, and we'll repeat rows seven through 12 for quite a while. So let's go ahead and begin row seven. I'm going to turn to come back the other way, of course, this has worked in rows, pull up my loop nice and high for another chainless starting double crochet, or chain three if you prefer. Go right into that first stitch there, like so, and then we're going to double crochet in the same stitch. There we have it. You can kind of think of this as half of a group of three. Now you can't break three and a half, so the best we can do is have two. We've got the center one almost of a group of three, and what would be the other one of a group of three. And I point this out because if you'll notice along our straight side, each row that we begin working this way will have start with a chainless starting double crochet or chain three and a double crochet in the same stitch. When we come back the other direction, we'll end with just one double crochet. So that's just something to keep in mind as you work too to help you memorize the row repeats. So back to row seven, we've got our first two double crochets in the first stitch there. Then we'll chain one. Then we're going to skip the next double crochet and work a double crochet in the center. So that's right in the center of our group of three. Then we just have one double crochet, like so. Then we chain one again, and we come over here to this last one, all the way over here, and there we're going to work three double crochets. Now, when we make our future repeats of this row, we'll have to, of course, have a lot more stitches to work into. But the part that we repeat is, here I'll show you, let me finish this stitch so I can show you on the row. The repeat would be the chain one, double crochet in the center of a group of three, chain one, three double crochets in the next only double crochet, the one that's out there by itself, sort of like this one. And that's, you can see it's starting to come together. We've got one double crochet with a chain one, 
three double crochets, then there'd be another chain one, and then one double crochet, and then another three, after another chain one, on across. So we're starting to establish our pattern here. So that's row seven. We're going to end with three double crochets in that last stitch every time. To begin row eight, we're going to pull up our loop and turn here, like so. Work a chainless starting double crochet right in that first stitch. Then we chain one. Then we work a double crochet in the next stitch. This is our increasing side with our angle, so it gets a little funky over here as we make our increases. Then we are going to chain one again and work three double crochets in this one over here by itself. So if you're seeing the pattern, every time we've got one in the middle of a row like this, we work three double crochets into it. If we've got three double crochets in a group, we're probably just going to work one double crochet right into the center one. It's just the edges, of course, where things get a little funky. So we've made our three, so we know we chain one. And since we're coming back this way to our straight side, we just make a double crochet right in that very last stitch. And get that on the hook. There we go. And that is the end of row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like to be able to count my rows with this one. I actually found that it's about one finger width. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Makes it just that little bit easier. So that's row eight. Let's go ahead and make row nine. Okay, so that's it for row eight. Let's begin row nine. I'm gonna turn, and to begin row nine, I'll start with my usual chainless starting double crochet, right in the first stitch there, like so. Then I double crochet right in back into that first stitch. Then chain one, and work a double crochet right into the center of that group of three. Chain one again, come over to this one. You can see this one would be all by itself, so we're going to work three double crochets into that one. So there's one, and two, and three, all into that stitch right there. And of course we'll chain one again, because we've just made a group of three. And then we're going to double crochet in the last stitch right there. So that's how you finish up any row nine repeat. You're gonna keep working across until you end up with a chain one and then a double crochet in that very last stitch, like so. And row nine is an important row because as we make our repeats and our shawl grows, it's a row nine repeat that we'll stop at before we work our special section. So let's go ahead and make our row 10. I'm going to pull up my loop and turn. And to begin row 10, once again, of course, I'll start with a chainless starting double crochet or chain three as a substitute for your first double crochet there, like so. And then I'm going to work two double crochets right into that same stitch. So there's one and there's two. Then continuing with row 10, I'm going to chain one and work a double crochet right into the center of that group of three. You can see our stitch pattern is pretty, pretty well established except for our edges here. Chain one again, work three double crochets into that one double crochet by itself, like so. And then we would keep doing that across, of course. Chain one, single crochet, or er, double crochet into the middle of a group of three. Chain one, three double crochets in one that's by itself until we get to the end. And then we work with a chain one, skip the next, and in the very last one, we'll work one double crochet. Like so. And there we have row 10. So we're ready for row 11. I will turn, and to begin row 11, I will work a chainless starting double crochet right in that first stitch there, as usual. If you prefer, of course, chain three, or whatever you like to do in instead of a double crochet for the first double crochet. 
Then we'll work a double crochet back in that same stitch, like so. And then we will chain one. And if we look at our previous row here, we come to a group of three, so we know it's a double crochet right in that center one, like so. Then chain one again. Then we come to a one group, a group of one, double crochet, so we work three in there. One and two and three, all into that double crochet right there. And then of course chain one, because we always do that after our groups. And then we come to a group of three right here, so we know we're going to have one in the middle. And then of course on further rows we'll just keep repeating this across, one, three, one, three, with the chains in between, till we get to the end of the row here. And then we chain one and finish with a double crochet in that very last stitch, like so. And that's it for row 11. I'm pull my finger out of the way so you can see it a little bit there. There we go. Now let's begin row 12. So to begin row 12, I will begin once again with a chainless starting double crochet, right in that first stitch right there, like so. And then I chain one and come over here. We've got a double crochet all by itself, so we work three into there. There's one and two and three. There we go. And then of course chain one. And as we come to this group of three, we know we've got a double crochet right in the center one, which means it's time to chain one again. Come over to this one by itself and work three in there. One, two, and three, like so. Then we chain one again and we come over to right here and we finish up with a double crochet right in that last stitch, which would have been the center of a group of three, but because it's our straight edge, only has two. So you can see how it grows and it's this rows, um, where would we here? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six were the setup rows. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12 are the rows that you keep repeating. And you can see, it's pretty easy to memorize right here. It's just the way the rows end to keep it growing that will take a little bit longer to get into your head. So we keep repeating these until we get to a row nine repeat on row 63. So let me set this aside. And here I've got a swatch that I worked a little bit further than the previous one, ending on a row nine repeat. So I was actually working this direction. So you can see I've got my stitches made. This would actually be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So row 15, but of course if you're making this full size, you'll wanna go all the way through row 63, but it'll look like this, same setup, just a little bit longer. So I'm going to pull in a new color and we can begin our first special section. So let's bring in color B. We're going to start by joining with a double crochet. So if you haven't done that before, it's pretty simple. And if you have tried it and don't like it or don't want to try it, you can just join with a slip stitch and chain three again for your first double crochet here. But I like to join with a double crochet. So I'm going to start with the tail end held in my hand, yarn over twice around my hook, go into that first stitch, and make a double crochet like so. I'm just careful not to drop that end until I've made the next stitch. So I'm gonna keep holding on to that. Then I'm going to double crochet in that first stitch again, like so. And then I'm going to double crochet in each remaining stitch and chain space across. So going right into the chain space, I can just work a double crochet there and then right into the double crochet. And you can see I dropped my tail end there because I know now that stitch is nice and secure. So I'll just make a double crochet in each stitch and chain space on across for row what would be 64, like so all the way across. And I will see you at the end of row 64.
So that's the end of row 64. So let's begin row 65. Row 65 is pretty simple, especially since we're starting from our straight edge here. We're just going to start with a chainless starting double crochet right in that first stitch as usual. There we are. And then from there, I'm going to chain one, skip one, and double crochet in the next all the way across. And if you used the um, join with double crochet that I showed you earlier to begin the previous row, that last stitch likes to hide a little bit. So you'll need to look very closely to find it. Again, that's a good place to use a stitch marker if you need to. If you've done a chain three, then that last stitch you worked into, will that be that chain three? So we're just chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next, all the way across. And of course, if you're actually on row 65, you have a lot more stitches to work into here than I do. This is just our little sample swatch. And then that's what I'm talking about. It looks like that last stitch right, that stitch right there is the last one. There's actually, that's the top of this stitch, the second to last. So for the top of this one, we need to come down here and make sure that we get this next stitch, which can be a little bit fiddly. Whoops, let me try that again. There we are. And that tail, remember, that we held in our hand is actually part of it, so we wanna catch that in it too. There we are, and make that last double crochet right there. So that's our repeat across, but to finish this row off, we do have to work one more extra double crochet in that last stitch. So two in the last stitch, for, so we can continue increasing across by one stitch every row, and that is it for row 65. And getting long already, even though it's just a little swatch. So let's go ahead and make row 66 together. So to begin row 66, I'll begin with our chainless starting double crochet, like so. And then I'm going to double crochet in the same stitch again, right back in that last stitch there. And then I am going to double crochet in the next stitch, like so. So we've got three double crochets made there. Then I'm going to skip the next stitch and work three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and the next double crochet. So I wanna skip this one right here and come to this one right here and work this great big shell. So we've got one, two, and three, like so, worked into that stitch. Then we chain two, one, two, and come right back to that stitch for three more double crochets. So there's one and two. I need to pull up a little bit more yarn here. And three. There we are. So that's that big shell shape all worked into that stitch right there. And then I will skip the next double crochet right there and double crochet in the one after that. Like so. And then I skip the next one right there, the next double crochet, and work another one of those big shells here. And that's our basic repeat. Work one of those big shells, which is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, skip the next double crochet and all the chain spaces around it, and work a double crochet in the one after that. Just repeating that on across. Until, of course, we get to the end of our row which should end pretty nicely with, if we skip that next one and come to that one here, it's gonna be our last one. So at the end, we just have a double crochet in the very last stitch. There we are. Easy enough, but that really starts to add some interest to our special section. So that is what row 66 looks like, and we're ready to begin row 67. So I'll turn back to work the other way here, and I'm going to start, of course, with my chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch, or you can start with the chain three, whichever you're using or prefer, like so. Erin's trying to creep up on me a little bit there. There we go. And then after we've made that one, we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then work a single crochet in the center of that big shell. So we jump all the way over to that chain two space, 
and put the hook right in that chain two space and work a single crochet like so then we chain three again one two and three and work a double crochet in the double crochet that was in between the shells and that's our basic repeat we chain three again one two three single crochet in the center there of that next shell one two three chains again and we're ready to double crochet in the next double crochet I will just keeping doing that on the way across until when we get to the end we'll make a double crochet in the next double crochet and we'll have two double crochets hanging out here right at the very end so to take care of those two we'll chain one like so skip that one and in the very last one right there probably the top of a chain three or a chainless starting double crochet you'll work two double crochets right in that last stitch like so there's one and there's two right in that same stitch like so so that's what it should look like at the end of row 67 we've got our shelves and our shells I keep saying shelves our shells and then sort of like a scaffolding almost right above it okay so now it's time to make row 68 I will begin row 68 with a chainless starting double crochet of course so we go right in there or you can chain three in which case you've got maybe on time there we go then we double crochet right back in that same stitch so we've got two stitches worked into the first stitch there then we double crochet in the next stitch like so then we chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet right there after that we chain one again double crochet in the next chain three space so that's that chain three space right here and just anywhere in it you're just going right into the space so I just usually kind of aim for the middle then we chain one and double crochet in the next stitch which would be that single crochet right there and then we just continue that across chain one double crochet in the next chain three space chain one double crochet in the next stitch that is our basic repeat for row 68 And yes those do shift within the chain three the ones in the chain three so just try and try and make them land in the middle there it's okay if you don't quite line it up when you make it you can literally just pull it over in blocking when you get to the blocking stage so we are on our ch last chain three space here so I know I need to look at my instructions to finish out the end of the row so when we get to the very end we just double crochet in that very last stitch easy peasy this too is one of the easier ones there we go and that is the end of row 68 so you can see that one sort of mirrors in looks the one we did right there so we must be coming to the end of our special section we're going to cap it off with a row that mimics this row right here so you probably can guess what we're going to do now for row 69 so to begin row 69 I will begin with a chainless starting double crochet in the first stitch like so there we go and then I'm going to double crochet in the chain space right there and then double crochet in the next stitch and just keep doing that right on across until only two stitches remain so this is an easy one we just double crochet in each chain space so right there and then a double crochet in each stitch chain space stitch all the way until we get to just two stitches remaining so I will see you at the end of row 69 okay so I'm almost at the end of row 69 I've got a double crochet in each chain space and then a double crochet in each stitch when we get to the end here we have just two stitches left so easy enough we double crochet in the next one and then work whoops <laughs> well easy enough if you don't drop your yarn there we go and then we just work two double crochets in that very last stitch to finish off row 69 and that is actually the end of our special section 
There's one and two. Don't let me forget that last stitch of our special section there. There we are. And that is the repeat that we'll do again a second time later on for rows 80 through 85. We'll be just like that. After that, we just go back to working in our main stitch pattern here, our groups of three and one. But that should give you a really good idea of how the Quicksilver Shawlette comes together. So that's the end of the Quicksilver Shawlette. Obviously, I haven't demonstrated the whole thing, but this shows you how to get it started, the basic row repeats, and then, of course, the special section repeats. Those will get repeated twice in this pattern. And then, at the end, you can have this beautiful shawl. The final border here is just a repeat of the special shell there. We just do it once more at the end and then a little single crochet edging to really cap off the Quicksilver Shawlette. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have, please do give it a like. We'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel and thank you so much for watching.